So the psalm is David said, Praise the Lord. For it is a it is good to sing praises to our God. For it is pleasant. And praise is beautiful. Can you hear that, brothers and sisters? Praise is beautiful. I'm saying praise has a face. It's beautiful. It's pleasant. It is beautiful. And um, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And this morning, God, we come. We come in your presence with one aim, one desire, one heart, and that is to worship you. Lord, we know there are times to enter into the Holy of Holies and really get into worship. It, it, it takes so much of the humanity of us because of the things that goes on around us and the things that goes on within us. But this morning, God, you who are mighty and terrible and dreadful in your ways, we ask of you to roll all the fears and the cares away and let the majestic power of your Holy Spirit be felt in this place today. Let every child feel the power of your Holy Spirit today, mighty God. In the name of Jesus, let every sick body line up with your divine word this morning. In the name of Jesus, let every straight thoughts be captured right now and bring into captivity to the knowledge of God. All praise, all glory, all honor to you. Because praise is pleasant and it is beautiful. So we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let our mouths be filled Hallelujah. with the praises of God this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to engage ourselves into worship. Hallelujah. Forget about ourselves and worship Him. Hallelujah. As we begin this first song. Fill me up, God. Is that your desire this morning? I am empty. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God.
make us whole so that we can really worship him yes, from a place of healing yes. and the wholeness. Hallelujah. There is healing in this place today. There is wholeness in this place today. Your praise is a weapon. Hallelujah. Your praise is a weapon. And so we will praise the Lord. We're going to speak to our souls this evening.
Thank you. 
understand that God is a God of seasons. Seasons must come. And seasons must end. I guarantee you, even though it seems like summer in Jamaica all year long, it is not summer. Every single God is a God of seasons. So we, we just need to trust God that when our season comes, we stay focused. Not going to be a pretty season all the time. And some of the time is like when the morning, um, when the music fades, you have that um, coming back to the art of worship. Um, when you come back to the art of worship, when have we ever said to the Lord, it's all about you? There's always something about us. It, I don't know in this life if there's a man that has ever said it is all about you, Lord. But God is gracious. And today we are going to we are going to try to get as close as we can to make it all about it. Because when the music fades and all is slipped away, and you simply come, it is easier to drift away from God at times than to draw closer to Him. And I realize that in life, when you sit alone by yourself, it is a hard thing because that's when your true self comes out. But I thank God that there are some prayers that you can't pray in church because if you pray that prayer, you never get to come back. But when you pray that prayer to God in your closet, you, you are relieved of, your, of the dangerous things that you have this destroyed.
This is a portion of the word of the Lord. You honor my saying. So 
the Lord has coordinated everything in his providence. Amen? Amen. And we give him the praise and the glory. We continue to express you know, our support for the bereaved families around. You know, the undertaker of a lady yesterday told me that he had six, six funeral services in the area. I said, you didn't be in this year yesterday. And then, <laughs> you laugh, don't you? <laughs> yes, <laughs> and, and, and if you think about it, not only him, the others that are around, you know? So the truth is, and you're thinking about the different areas as well, that a lot of persons are really passing from this life. And um, a lot of families are left in distress um, at this time. And we also have a lot of persons facing deep challenges with illnesses. So the reality is that it's tough times um, that we are living in. And um, if it doesn't come close to you, well, you know, it is often said that the blood of Jesus is stronger than any other blood. Not true? Yeah. And so when your brothers and sisters face it, you feel it as well. And um, we feel the weight of the burdens that are, are around us. And so we are instructed to call on the Lord in these times. Amen? And I really believe that the conference theme is very instructive. Um, you know, I think it's a very appropriate theme for us as we continue to pray and to fast. Because sometimes, you see, brethren, we just have to stop. We're too busy sometimes. Mm -hmm. We have to just stop in the moment and think about what is going on. Because sometimes the, the challenges you hear in this, taking a phone call here, there, and you're confused. But sometimes we have to just stop, you know, and say, Lord, what is happening around me? What is happening in the family? What is happening in the community, Lord? What is happening in the church? And call on him because he's the one who's able to help us. Amen. And he instructs us that prayer is a God-ordained means of meeting the needs of his people and bringing glory to himself. It is God-ordained means of bringing glory to himself. And so even though God knows, we still pray. Because he is the one who ordained prayer as the way he meets the needs of his children. And so, brothers and sisters, there is you know, great need for us to pray and to remember, especially those who are facing very tough times. I was telling Sister Wallace this morning about this friend, um, you know, who, when a minister, his van met in a little accident and he borrowed a Noah van from a friend who was so kind, had more than one vehicle. And he parked it at his house. Parked the Noah van at his house. Drove it for a few days, waiting on his one to fix. And one morning, his wife went out because he take his wife to work. His wife went out and called and said, Honey, where's the van? He said, it is out there. She said, no, it's not there. Somebody drove it away. And um, stole the van that did not belong to him. And up until now, if he, did, if he didn't have comprehensive insurance, you know, he would be in real trouble. And so, brethren, you know, we have the world that we are living in. We have some people who don't have any conscience, you know. They don't care, you know. <laughs> in this world, you know, they don't care what you're going to go out. That is your wife. You take it. You use the van to break the door. She get ready. Everything. No van. You know? And so people face hard times. And um, in times like these, 
we need to, the Lord is saying to us, we need to focus on Him. Yes. We need to focus more on the Lord. Um, we want to focus more on His Word. We need to, you know, steady yourself a little bit. Yeah. You know, and, and, and seek the Lord. And seek His wisdom in times of difficulties. And in times of trials. Because God always comes true. He's a faithful God. And the text that we have before us, I'll just read 1 to 5 again for emphasis. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one wait on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously with our cause. But here is the pearl. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all day long. Father, you are glorious. You are exalted. And we thank you to know that you are delighted, O oh God, to answer our prayers and to show us your way, even in times of trials and hardship, that we can walk in your wisdom, that we can walk in your perfect will. Father, our sincere desire is to bring glory to you. Because you created us, your children, for your glory. You created us that we might praise you and worship you. And that is our purpose. Help us, Almighty God, to be intentional, to be diligent in fulfilling that purpose. And so we ask that you would bless your words to our hearts and be glorified among us. In Jesus' great name we pray. Amen. 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 O oh Lord, show me your way. Just lift your hand and pray that prayer with me. O oh Lord, show me your way. Hallelujah. You know, my beloved brethren, when I look carefully at this psalm, Psalm 25, it teaches us a very significant lesson. It teaches us to see God in tough times. And that it doesn't matter how the tough times came about or the reason why you are facing these challenges. But God is still equal to the task and is there for us when we seek him. When I read this, um, you know, it brings me back to our study in the book of James. James chapter 1, 5 to 6, that shares the same emphasis of this psalm. It says, but if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all generously without reproach, and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of a sea, driven and tossed by the wind. And such a man cannot receive anything from God. And so, brothers and sisters, we see the counsel that James was able to give to believers and how this counsel aligns so well with the counsel that we receive from Psalm 25. That in the midst of trials, in the midst of difficulties, we must endeavor to seek the wisdom of God. 
What should I do, Lord? How should I operate in this time of challenge? When I read this psalm, I see that it is one of the first acrostic psalms that we have in the book of, in, especially in book one. Because each line begins with a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And usually I, you know, sometimes I resist interpretation for acrostic psalms because you have so many different subject matters in these psalms that come up um, every now and then. But you notice here that in this acrostic psalm, the David himself pictures life as a difficult journey that we cannot successfully make by ourselves. That whether we believe it or not, we need the help of God in order to sojourn in this life. Notice that he uses the word way to refer to the journey. And he uses this about four times. And he uses the word part once in the text. As he cried out to the Lord for wisdom to make the right decisions. And you know, brothers and sisters, there are some decisions in life that we can go around and play with. But there are some that are really of great consequences. And you cannot, you say, Lord, I cannot afford to get this one wrong. I want to ensure that I line everything up with your will, with your plan, and with your purposes for me. And when we think about decisions relating to our family, we can't afford to get it wrong. Because other family members are depending upon us. Decisions relating to our church, we cannot afford, Lord, to get this wrong. There are so many things that are dependent on the decisions that we make. And this is why we have to say, Lord, lead me. Notice that the psalmist recognized that he was surrounded by enemies. Some of who he really knew and those he did not know. And he confessed that they hate him. And they also set traps for him. Obviously, they thought he was a bird. And they also wanted him to fail and to be ashamed. In fact, to demoralize him. That he would move away from the very task that was before him. And so it was in this context that he cried out to the Lord. But the challenge was not just external. He had a challenge on the inside as well. Because he recognized that he was not all obedient to God. That he was himself a sinner. And he did not deserve the mercy of Almighty God. But yet he cried out to God in difficult times. That God would help him. And deliver him from the, the treacherous enemies that were there seeking his demise, foes that outnumbered him and sought to gain advantage over him to the extent where he felt as if he was trapped already. And so, brothers and sisters, David even felt lonely and afflicted, and his situation grew worse. But in the midst of this, he cried out to God. And he said, show me your way, O oh Lord. Amen. And when we find ourselves in trying situations, this is a prayer that we must pray. Before we move to make major or even minor decisions, this is a prayer that we must pray. Show me your way, O oh Lord, that I may walk in your will. Amen. And the question is, brothers and sisters, as we look at this, what about us? If David was a man of God's own heart, 
If David was a man who walked with God in faithfulness, but yet he was not exempt from trials. What about us today? There are those who will say, but pastor, if I serve the Lord, if I live in obedience, and if I live in faithfulness to God, then I can expect that I will not have any problems. Let me tell you this, that is a lie. I can tell you that it's when you are very faithful. Amen. That is when the challenges come. And so it seems as if it, it's just a part of life. If David fears it, think it not strange. James says, when you find yourself facing all of these fiery trials, because they will work patience, and patience will have its work in you. Do not be surprised, Peter says, when you go through these fiery trials, because it's a part, it's a part of the journey. And so he prayed to God. He made his petition that God would help him to triumph over his enemies. And he asked God to give him instructions and also to bring renewal. And then he prayed for the peace of Jerusalem. And many of you know today the current situation that you have in the Middle East. But there are believers who are praying that God will bring deliverance. Because I can tell you, my beloved brethren, we must cry out to God. Because you may say to me, but pastor, that doesn't concern me. Well, let me tell you this. When I go up, everything go up. Because the transportation of things go up. You know what is the high prices you are facing now? Yes. You know what is the challenges you are facing now? A lot of these have to do with what is going on on the global scene. Yes. You know that? Some of the ships, they say, have to take longer route yes. these days. Transportation costs heavier. And so this is one of the reasons why you have the challenges. So don't say it doesn't concern you. It is reaching you some way, somehow. And this is why, brothers and sisters, war in the Middle East will not help us. And it will not help them either. What you are going to have is constant killing of human beings. And that is what you have been seeing. Where there is a, a disregard for God's creation. For human life. And I can tell you that when we fall into that gap, we are in real trouble in the world. When human beings disregard human life. The sacredness and the sanctity of human beings created in the image of God. And so we notice here that David as he approached God in prayer he understand that God was able, he was the only source of help. And so we see here that he prayed for really three main reasons behind his prayer. And the first one is that he believed that God can help. That God himself is our help. And this is one of the reasons why he cried out. And you notice the first verse, he said, To you, O Lord, his prayer was directed to God. To you, the Almighty God, Adonai, in the text. I lift up my soul. You know, this is really another expression of her. The lifting of the soul to God. And placing trust and confidence in God. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Notice, brothers and sisters, that while others, were lifting up their hearts to idols. Idols that were manufactured as substitutes to the true and living God. David resolved in his heart to lift up his soul to the Lord because God was his 
only true source of encouragement. You know, brothers and sisters, God has a way of encouraging you. Even in the midst of trials. There are some Bible scholars who believe that in this time, David was going through real family crisis. It is said that it is difficult when strangers come up against you. But when your own children start to fight against you, that is very hard. When a man in his home and everybody turn against him, and the children turn against him, and one of them, Absalom, was determined to kill him because he could not wait. But in the midst of it, God is always able to bring encouragement. Because this is one of the darkest hours of David's life. But in the midst of it, he looked up. One writer says that when the outlook looks bleak, then try the outlook. Look up to God because he hears and he answers the prayer of his children. David affirmed his faith in the Lord and his desire to glorify his name. He didn't want to fail and to bring disgrace to the name of the Lord. He wanted people to know the God who he worshipped and he confidently asked God for help. Not that I might exalt, be exalted Lord, but help me that I might bring glory to your name and that I will not bring disgrace to the kingdom. He desperately cried out to God for wisdom to make right decision. You know, when we have an interest in the will of God, it always makes a difference. Because we always want to see God's guidance. You know, there are those who make decisions, brothers and sisters, and they make the decisions based on feelings. And just say, Pastor, I feel good, you know. You know, I feel good about this young lady and my wife. I said, Jesus. <laughs> I say, ask the question, well, how does God feel about you and that person? I wonder if you understand the example, Virgil. That a decision like that is so important that you cannot base it on how you feel. It must be based on the will and the plan and the purposes of God. Because you know, I always say it and I will say it again that whenever I align myself with the will of God it may never go conventionally how people expect it to go but it must work. I want to hear what I'm saying. And because God's will cannot fail God's purpose, the counsel of the Lord, will stand forever. And this is why I can make, people can get up and make any decision that they want to make. And sometimes there are those who blame the church about church divorce rate high in church. You know, and I often say to myself, did you ask the people if they had asked God? But you get up and write in big statistics and publishing. That, you know, many of you read George Barner report coming out of the United States and several reports. I think I shared one of them in Bible studies one night about the, the rate that we have around us. And some say it is higher in the church, pastor. You know, but the truth is, brothers and sisters, if we align our relationships with the will of God, they must persevere. Talk to me. They will press past the hardships and press past the difficulties. And some persons will ask me, but pastor, why do you go ahead and marry somebody who was married before? And I said, the truth is, I can't tell, I don't know about if I don't know if the first one was the will of God. And I don't even know if the one that I'm going to do. <laughs> Apart from I pray 
and ask God, it is between them and God. Yes. Talk to me, the brothers and sisters. It's a relationship between them and God. The most I can do is do my duties that the Lord has given me to do. And pray that the best will take place. Talk to me, brethren. But the truth is that people must see God. See God. Value God's opinion on our relationships. And I am certain that they must persevere. And so the psalmist says, show me your ways, Lord. He uses the Hebrew word that we know so much, yada, which really means to make it known, Lord. And some of the translators translate, they didn't translate, show, they say, make known your ways to me, Lord. Because the truth is that this, it is coming from a sincere heart. A heart that is sincere, that, listen to me, I am not omniscient. I don't know everything, Lord. But I have access to someone who knows all things. Amen. Talk to me, brethren. Amen. I don't know all the secrets of life and the intricacies of life. But I have access to a God who knows all things. Amen. And therefore, I said, man, no. The psalmist wishes to know God's way, to be taught God's path, and to be led into God's own truth. He recognized that he could not discern it if God did not show it to him. And this is why he cried out and he continued and said, Lord, teach me, teach me, show me a way that I may walk in it. Because the path of the Lord are mercy and truth. Let me tell you this, brothers and sisters. Nobody can come to me and say, Pastor, God led me astray. It's not God who led you. And whenever you hear what I'm saying, those who walk in the will of God will never be led astray. They will never be led on the path of destruction. If they walk in the ways of Almighty God. Let me tell you this. There is something about walking in the ways of God. And asking God to show you his way. Because everything around you must work for you. Even the climate works for you. I wonder if you understand me. When you are walking in the will and the way of God. Things work for you. Notice in Egypt when the children of Israel did what God told them to do. Moses. Amen. And the environment started cooperating with them. Amen. When Egypt had darkness, Israel had light. Because they were in the will of God, the others were not. Walking in rebellion against the will of God. He says, show me Yada. Help me to know Lord. I want to know your way for me. Even as we march forward, this must be a prayer for our church here at Battersea. That the Lord will lead us how he wants us to be led. And this must come from a sincere heart. That I truly, Lord, you know, there are some persons, you know, I was talking about consultation, in a consultation course last week, and I was, one of the things we were discussing, one of the dangers is that when you go to people's place, and they call you for consultation, they make up their minds what they want to do before you come. <laughs> and so when you go there and you listen to them it's as if all they are saying to you you know what I mean affirm me affirm what I am doing if you ever go against them you are a bad consultant talk to the brethren you know and, and we have seen it the institutions just we, this is how we do it with a long long list of things and it has always worked this way you know you, you know we, we hope not to change it and the list you said is there any weaknesses with it no no weakness and so just approve us and you have people like that who go to God not willing to hear what God want them to do 
All you do is go to God and say, say, God, approve me. Yes. Let me tell you this. I make this decision already, Lord. You know, and this is the way I am going, the journey I am taking. Approve me. But God cannot approve anything that is against his will. I wonder if you are hearing me. He cannot approve anything that is against his word and his plan and his purposes for his children. So there are some even go as far as wanting God to approve sin. And so it has to be a genuineness, brothers and sisters. A sincerity of heart that, Lord, I sincerely want to go your way. I am not coming to you to dictate to you the way. But I sincerely, I humble myself before you. I want to go your way. So the petition is very strong. An earnest desire to do God's will. And so he prays, show me your way, your path, and show me your truth, almighty God. You know, we can be sure that when God shows us his way, then we will walk in the center of his divine perfect will. David would have had the benefit of history because he would have known many before who would have cried out to God in the midst of distress. Don't know what to do. You remember Jehoshaphat? When three powerful armies came up against him and he stood before God in the temple crying out to God. He said, Lord, Brothers and sisters, he looked to God and God brought confusion to the armies and brought deliverance to Israel. Many of you know when Esther, the Queen Esther, called the great time of fasting with Mordecai. You remember that? And you know what was hanging over them? Death. But God delivered. The church has a strong history of deliverance. Of God working on behalf of the people who are humble enough to say, Lord, show me your way. That I might walk. That I may walk in it. So he prayed with assurance and faith. But he also prayed with contrition. Confessing his sins before God. That he regret some of the things that he did. Whether it be sins of omission or sins of commission. He thought about it from his very youth. Because remember the Bible said if you confess your sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So he said, Lord, for your goodness sake, for your name's sake, pardon my iniquity and help me, Lord. David prayed because he was assured that God was his help. How many are sure that God is your help today? You know that God is your help today. You can say, I lift my eyes to the hills. When is coming my help? For my help comes from the Lord. And he is the creator of heaven and earth. Which means that he is powerful. He is our helper today. And many of you may say to me. Pastor I'm facing all different kinds of challenges in my life. But remember who is your help. God is your help. He prayed also secondly. Because he knew that God can be trusted. You know, sometimes you can't trust some people, you know. Talk to me. They say one thing and do another thing. Inconsistency is really a terrible character trait. Talk to me, Virgin. But this is not with God. He's a God of truthfulness. A God of consistency. 
And so when God says something, he means it. And he will do it. And so this is one of the reasons we pray to him because we can't trust him. We sang the hymn this morning, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. To take him at his word. Rest upon his promise. And to know the set, the Lord. We can trust him because he is a good God. The psalm is said, good and upright is the Lord. And you, you know, let me tell you this, brothers and sisters, we don't have to doubt the goodness of God. Because if I were to ask you to testify of his goodness, we couldn't finish church today. Even though we need to finish now in a few minutes. Amen. Because his goodness, mercy, everlasting. God has been good to us. And so notice brothers and sisters, the text says that the meek, the humble, he will guide in his way. I you know this concept of meekness represents what we call power under control. That the person who is humble or who is meek is the individual who is able to control. It's not that you don't have the power, you know. It's not that you can't do things, but you know how to control yourself. It's strong self-control. And so the meek, the humble, God promises to guide the humble, the meek in the way. Because he says, if you notice verse 12 of the text, is very instructive that the man who fears the Lord, he shall teach him the way. Yes. If you fear God, let me tell you this. We are in a world today, I have to point this out. We are seen as if people have lost the fear of God. Well, if this word fear is a very powerful word, you know, in the, especially in the Old Testament, the fear of God. The wise man said it is the beginning of wisdom. When one learns to fear God, the concept of fear, yari, it really means to reverence, have respect for God. To know that God is a holy God. That God is a God of justice. He's a God of righteousness. And to respect that God is sovereign. You know, when I listen to how some people talk about God. Or how some people ignore God. Let me tell you, don't laugh when they ignore God. It's a serious thing. Brothers and sisters. Because God is a God of righteousness and justice and real men will respect God. It's men Sunday, not you? Men must respect God. Real men respect God. They know that God is a God of justice. They know that God is a God of mercy, a God of peace, a holy God, a God who is in control. Real men will not go around talking nonsense about God. Real men. And today we are real men in the church. Don't you? Come on, men of God. Give glory to God. You respect God. This is why you call on Him. Don't you? This is why you ask Him to help your family. Help your children. Because we love God and we respect Him. It's a sign of reverence. Let me tell you this. The, you know, the concept both humility and reverence go together for the one who wants to receive help from God. But the problem that we have in the society is the problem of pride and arrogance. There are some people who are too arrogant, full of pride, self-aggrandizement. Amen. Want to be God themselves. And so, brothers and sisters, those who will benefit from the grace of God must be humble. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will lift you up in the midst of that same humility we must respect God we must not just go around and do any and anything and believe, let me tell you, some people will do something, you don't know what they do on Saturday or what they turn up 
My God. Talk to me, brethren. If they really respect God and respect the church, so many things that they do, they wouldn't do it. And then they find themselves and don't believe that they don't want that they, God made us. God is merciful, you know. Merciful. Let me tell you, His love is greater than His wrath all the time. If that were not the case, you would be surprised some things you would have seen. Man, real man, must love God. Real men must serve God. And they must respect God. Because God is a good God. And if you do that, he will lead you. Let the church say he will lead you. He will guide you. When you fear him enough to go to him as a Lord, I cannot find my way. Lead me and guide me. You know, I thank God for the culture of prayer and fasting that I maintain. And I want you to know that I have fasting every single week. Every week. I hardly miss having fa If I can't attend a ser this service, I am fasting. It was Mondays that we used to meet and pray and fast. We respect God, you know. And we know that God can help us. And so we go before him and fast and pray and ask him for his direction. Talk to me, brothers and sisters. The Lord, I have this decision that I must make. Amen. Even simple things as exams right throughout my time as a student at Bible College. Monday, I have to find myself at the fasting because I was the fasting speaker. The ladies said it was most of the older ladies at the fasting. And they're looking out for me to come to the fasting. But when I go out there and speak for them, they pray for me. And they cry out to God. Deliver him. Bless him. Use him for your glory. Talk to me brothers and sisters. And God answered their prayers. And so I am the result. Of the prayers. Of the saints. Who call upon God. Many of us here today. We can say that we are the result of prayer. Of people who devoted themselves. Before God. And cry out to God. For help. Because we humble ourselves enough. To know that our academic abilities will fail us. I want to hear what I'm saying. Talk to me brothers and sisters. You know how many PhDs are in the grave today? Or how many can't say anything today? You know how many of them today? It is only the grace of God. Man must respect God. Talk to me. Man must fear God. And man must learn to trust God. Because the secret man, the secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. If you fear God and you seek him, he will bring you into divine secrets that you will understand things that you would never have otherwise understood. The secret of the Lord with them that fear him. But you know, he cried out to God finally because he knew that God can deliver. He said he will pluck my feet out of the net. And you know, brothers and sisters, some people are not literally trapped in a prison, but figuratively situations imprison them. Talk to me. They are backed in all different kinds of corners of distress and the enemy like to set traps but God shall pluck your feet out of every net in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah come on brothers and sisters that no trap of the enemy will prevail over the Christian he said my eyes in verse 15 are ever toward the Lord and he will pluck my feet out of the net. Danger is there, but it will not bring me down. Loneliness is there, it will not bring me down. Broken heart, regrets, fears, despair. All of these are there. But the Almighty God, He is a deliverer. And He will pluck your feet out of every net. And fly every single shot 
of the enemy that we can walk in victory you have to sometimes declare it i shall not die i will live and declare the words of the lord Amen. whatever chops the enemy want to set i am a child of god i am not a bird and no chop will be able to contain me Amen. show me your way hallelujah show me your ways oh god that i might walk in it god bless you god bless you
here and you are not saved, we want to pray for you. You can walk to this altar and you may be here and you are saved and you still say, we want to pray for you. Um, we want to offer prayer for you today. It's a very powerful time of prayer in the presence of God. Hear my humble, hear my humble cry. It doesn't matter what your situation may be. Leave from your seat and come as we offer prayer for you today. Amen. You may be here, you don't know the Lord Jesus as Savior. And you are here, we want to pray for you. Welcome, my friend. And we want to also pray for those who maybe may have difficult decisions to make. And you need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask uh, Deacon Powell. We will be offering the prayer for you at this time. Say. you know as you're here at the altar the Lord is still answering prayers Amen. and I, I don't want anybody to think that the thing is too small for God there's nothing too small for him I'm here as a testimony before you that the Lord does some stuff that you might think he has no interest in but he does it yes. celebrating real examples of that this very week Going to the depot, checking into my hotel for work. Two different instances where God did something right then and there that I needed him to do within a time window. God is still doing it. I had to sit in the car and say, God, it looks like you have a ball today. Oh, yeah, go on, sir. Because God is just showing up little ways yes. he's doing it so I want to encourage us God is answering prayers and guess what some of the something you know we're asking for and he does it yes. and so we want to remember those things sometime and just to stop and say thank you God yes. and none of us are so much experts that we can't get better at prayer this is a great longing I have in my life. Every year I'm saying to the Lord, teach me to pray. I want to be better. I want to have this sensitivity to what you're doing, what you're saying, how things are working. Can we just bore it at this time? Lord, I pause for the freedom, first of all, to be in a church where I hear your word. To be in a church where I can be encouraged by your word. Thank you for the faithfulness of your servant. Thank you for your grace at work in him. Strengthen him. Bless his house. Bless everything concerning him. And Lord Jesus, as you have reminded us again that we should ask for guidance. I pray God that this will be a strong desire and overwhelming desire in us this day and this very week as you guide us. Lord, we thank you for those as an act of faith, as an act of humility, as an act of service who have come to this altar as a visible demonstration that we believe you hear us, you answer us, you act on our behalf. And so I pray, Lord Jesus, that you meet your children at their point of need. Yes, Lord. Meet their needs. Oh, God. Lord, there are needs in here that are not expressed. Yes, but the hearts murmur to you. The hearts cry to you. Yes, Lord. And so I pray for your shalom. Oh, 
over broken hearts today. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you'll remove all the schizo, all the break, all the divisions in the mind. Hallelujah! And that your grace will be over the minds of your children. Lord, we need you. We need you. But I thank you that you have given us a helper. Thank you that you have come alongside us for this season. And so I pray that this reality will be seen in the lives of your children. Show up, Lord God, for mental and emotional weights and baggage. Show up, mighty God, for provision of every kind. Show up, God, for health, maladies and stresses and, and, and God, pressures. We need your help. With your stripes, we are healed as we receive your reign over our bodies, over our minds. We receive your reign over some spaces that we have to enter. And it's highly pressuring. Holy Ghost of God. Thank you, Jesus. God of our hearts, with your peace. Mighty God, that's so how God we come to you. On behalf of those that have not yet crossed the line of faith. Yeah. And God, we will just lift them up before you like those men who, who tore off the roof. Yeah. And we set them before you and we say, God, full deliverance. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, liberate right. from every power of darkness. Break to an heart. Regenerate. Rescue. In the name of Jesus, every fear of phobia, every distress because of danger, we rebuke every power of darkness and we receive your reign. Ask them to receive your divine life today. In the God, the youth, the children among us, we pray and touch them. Cover them under your blood, God. Dangerous times. Rebellion in the hearts. Demonic assaults upon them. But we pray that you lose from every power of darkness today in the name of Jesus. God, our kids must not leave church as they came. Hallelujah. As if you're not present. As if you're not able. Yes. You are willing and able. Lose. Today, in the name of Jesus, liberate in the name of Jesus. Ah, uh, you're in supreme, mighty God. Ah, uh, God, as we come against every arthritis. Oh, God, yes, yes, every challenge with the foot. Yes, this day we speak to them. In the name of Jesus, we speak to circulation, we speak to diabetes. God, that foot must go in the shoes. Must go in there. Hallelujah. Oh God, walk in strength. Hallelujah. Walk in victory today. We are great God. And you care for us. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. For all the ways you do it. Yes. And all the ways you will do it. Yes. We just rejoice in you today. Yes. Either to you have helped us. Yes. And we believe you will help us again. Yes. Have your way. Let your kingdom come. And let your will be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.